podcast. Halloween and horror. Served chilled. Shock tales. Hey, welcome back to the last bar and dispensary on the left. I'm your G host, Baker. Glad you could join us for our annual, I mean, our, our annual Halloween party. Uh, there, there is a cover charge tonight. Um, you have to give us a five-star review or at least follow and like the podcast, all right? Well, I hope you're thirsty, as Scully has just made up a fresh batch of prison toilet gin. I know, sounds kind of gross, but it is pumpkin lice flavored. So um, follow me as we make our way down to the back booth to join up with our master of ceremonies, Johnny Thunder. Hey, dude, what's going on? Yo, hey, how's it going, man? Great job that with the decorations. The atmosphere is perfect for the Halloween party. Looks good. Oh, you like all that? Good, good, oh, good. Yeah. yeah, I spent about 10 seconds. Yeah, cool. Oh, well, you know, I, you, you, you outdone yourself. <laughs> you know, it's always, I always do the least for you. You know, the, the, the pumpkin. The leastest with the mostest. The pumpkin on the bar with the, the one hole cut. In, in, I don't know what that is for exactly. Oh, my the, God. Oh, crap. Did I leave that out there? The jack o' lantern shoes, <laughs> my jack o' lantern. <laughs> oh damn! Uh, uh, so, um, hey, what's on tap for tonight? Well, I think we have a bunch of stuff to get to. We want to. Uh, we're going to eventually talk about our Halloween season. We, I think, I have a book review coming up, and we have a couple movies I want to talk about, um, including Terrifier three and one cleverly enough called Haunt Season because. You know, it's um, <clears throat> haunt season. Oh, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, should we just like, get right to the movies? Let's do it. How long can you scream without needing like a break or something? Uh, probably a few hours. This is Matilda. It's her first time at a haunted house. We're just a bunch of theater kids who never grew up and got real jobs. Five, two, three. It's fake. It's only fake if you don't believe it. It's all fantasy, right? This is all part-time and seasonal, so sometimes people just disappear. So what's your thing? I'm either gonna chase people around with a fake chainsaw. Or I'm gonna chase around with a real one. Oh. Tonight, we give the people what they want! And what they want ah! is blood! They want cuts, they want clowns with chainsaws. Ah! Oh, come to the right place. Are you ready to die? So Haunt Season just released in 2024. It's written and directed by Jake Jarvey, starring Sarah Elizabeth, Anna Dragovich, and Steven Kristoff, filmed at Realm of Terror Haunted House in Illinois. So aspiring actress Matilda, who's really like desperate to like find work after she graduated, takes a job at this haunted house, right? And so she gets this job filling in for the previous actor who disappeared and she played um, like the scalped girl like in a, a killer torture scene, right? So, so she gets more and more involved. She meets more people in this haunted entertainment world and all of a sudden there's a mass maniac behind the scenes who starts targeting the cast. And what he does is he comes in and starts like killing everyone in their individual scenes and tries to bring about this sort of all Hallows Eve event at, at, at this haunt. So, you know, you're following all these characters behind the scenes in their personal life at this haunt and Matilda and her newfound friends need to try to band together to try to survive the night. As I said, it was actually filmed at um, Realm of Terror Haunted House, and it, there's a whole complex out there. So it's not the haunted; it's only it's the haunted house. There's an arcade. I think they have like a happy hayride kind of section. They have uh, some other stuff going on. I think there's like a pop putter or something. But anyway, so it's it's again it's a it's a smaller budget film, and. What I really liked about it was sort of this behind the scenes kind of stuff of of a pro haunt, right? So, you know, you've got this story about this actor coming in, trying to like find her way into the group and then sort of the murders going on. And, you know, and then they're like delving into like their personal scenes and like behind the scenes and their personal tragedies and all this other nonsense. But I would say overall, I kind of dug 
it more when it was just the haunted house stuff <laughs> or when they're going through the haunt and i was like oh yeah that's yeah that's cool and like oh yeah that's you know you're behind the scenes you're getting your makeup on and you're trying to uh get ready for uh for the night now of course they take liberties with everything right so you know you've got some characters that are doing some things that would never ever fly like in a real haunted house um there's other people that are doing things that are just completely ridiculous story-wise so that's like where i'm getting to like it's a little uneven and even in the execution where when everything kind of like you know hits the wall at the end when everything goes to hell you, you kind of wonder, you know, where's security and where's, um, you know, the radio system and where's, uh, you know, everyone has like safety protocols in place and that didn't happen. Uh, the, the personal aspect of the story is where I thought that it kind of wasn't even and dragged a little bit. Um, I really wasn't interested in the characters and it was a little weird kind of like some of the storylines and I'm not going to ruin anything, but there was like one particular like little character that I was just like, yeah, that one fly in real life. And I'm not sure why this is even in here. Cause it's not funny. And I, I think it's a little uneven and I understand what they were doing and I appreciate it. You know, I dig obviously movies like this, like set in haunted houses. I think we just had haunt uh, too long ago and there's a couple other ones, but I think I would have stepped back a little bit and actually consulted more with maybe say the the haunt, you know, that they worked at and kind of say, Hey, look, if something like this happened here, how would security react or how would the actors react? Or like, what would you do? And not just kind of have this kind of free for all at the end where nothing makes any sense. Because frankly, when like, you know, all hell breaks loose and people are running out as, you know, out of um, emergency exits and having all kinds of like craziness going on, there would be a reaction from the outside. So I would say, look, it's, it was fun. It was 90 minutes. You get to see a really, really cool pro haunt behind the scenes. I'm not really too invested in any of the characters. The acting was a little uneven. Some of them were fine. Some of them were painful. Um, direction wise, it was, you know, eh, okay. Um, but, you know, I, I would say, look, I caught it on, I think it was Fandango at home for like four ninety nine, five ninety nine. I think you paid like eight ninety nine on whatever. Yeah, it was, um, I don't even remember, but uh, yeah, I was like, yeah. "What the hell?" And you, I, <laughs> I, text, I texted you. I go, oh, "Okay, I guess it's seven, You know, because you said it was like five bucks, and I was like, "Oh," and I'm like, "Oh," I, and I, I thought you were just wrong, and I was like, "Oh, well, yeah, it, it looks like it's seven ninety nine on." How, on how v- dare you? It was on like um, I don't know if it was on Voodoo or wherever, and I, I so I go Voodoo. Oh, so I rented it, and um, and then I then I. Then you text me back. Oh yeah, fan day going home for five. I'm like too late. I already went to the thing. So well, anyway, because again, the supposition that I'm always wrong. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I would watch it if it's for free. Yeah. You know, if you're like working on um, props or you're like you're setting up for Halloween or something, I'd watch it. You know, like I said, it was actually cool to see this haunted house because I'm sort of like if I was ever in the area, I'd like I'd go check out Roma Tower. You know, look pretty cool behind the scenes. Yeah. And and I, you know, there were a couple actors I said that were like I thought did some good jobs. Um, you know, there's not too much to the mystery of the story. It's very basic. Again, this actor comes in, joins the crowd. There's murders going on, and you know, it's it's kind of basic, but. Like I said, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. I just don't know that I would pay for it. Now, I think there's a lot of potential for everybody in the movie, and I you know, would love to see more from them. And I, like I said, I, I, I love this type of flick, but you know, it wasn't exactly the greatest thing I've seen all season. Now, I left with a couple of questions. One was, yes. are Hunt actors really that irritating? Are they that excruciatingly? <laughs> Is uh, <laughs> wait are, are any of my coworkers listening? <laughs> the other question I have, you don't even have to answer that. It's okay. It's kind of a okay. rhetor- it's a rhetorical question. Well, well, I'll, I'll, wait, 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 wait. I'll put I'll put it this way, and I've said this. I've actually said this to my bosses multiple times yeah. at Bates. I I I, sh- I I show up at the farm. I clock in. I do my job. I clock out, and I go home. <laughs> you, can you, pee, can you peel out of the parking lot? <laughs> like, uh, like Roadrunner. Pew! Like, 
Feet uh, don't fail me now. Uh, so, and the other question I have is: Are you an exhibitionist or are you a theater kid? Which one are you? Well, there, <laughs> there are some, and I didn't want to get into spoilers, but that's where I had said I was like, sort of, you know, uh, you like, like around, the party scene is was a little. Do you hang around backstage with your slong hanging? <laughs> Sadly, nobody would notice. <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, I've made a lot of good friends at the haunts over the years. We've met a lot of good people. And it's just like everything else, no, right? I, I, you know, yeah. you, you get good people, you get bad people, you get yeah. people you click with, you get people you're like, eh. yeah. But yeah, and the, the my only comment is, and, and I have this like in my head from so many past of reviews that you've done. Uh, it was a little CW, uh, like a CW <laughs> movie ish type of thing. But. <laughs> But yeah, not not excruciating. Just dragged a bit. If it shows up like free on Tubi, you know, you, you would, it's worth a watch, I guess. Or you know what I also would say would be a lot of fun What's if that? you have a bunch of your haunt friends that work at you know either like you do a home haunt or you're all from a pro haunt and you're having a party and you're hanging out. Oh yeah, it would be fun to just be like because I saw some other people post reviews and they were like, well, does this happen? Does this happen? I was like, well, I didn't see it yet, but let me look check it out. And it's always funny because, like, again, when you see something like this, it's, well, that would never happen. That would never happen. That would never happen. <laughs> that would never happen. And, uh, y- you know, so like, it would be kind of fun to kind of do the uh, mystery science theater kind of uh, heckling of like, oh, my God, what the F? You know, we'd never, you know, oh, my God, Joe would never let that go on with security. He'd be right in there, you know. So I think you'd have a lot of fun kind of, you know, getting drunk and bullshitting about it. But Sure. Or fast forwarding through it, and you know, I didn't just re- taking your way through a review. I didn't realize it was uh, it was an actual haunt. I, I, you know, I was like, oh, this looks like looked like a haunt, and I was just wondering if I was. I actually didn't, I guess, take that extra step to just Google it and go to. Is it, is it yeah, it's in, it's it's Round Lake Beach, yeah. um, in Illinois. So like the whole thing that they filmed there is their little complex. So what they do is in the season they have like a pumpkin patch. They do the haunt. They have the arcade. And they have all that other stuff that they showed in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because even like their jackets and stuff, and they the t shirts of Realm of Terror. Yeah, yeah. No, it looked legit. So too legit to quit. Hey, hey. Too legit. <laughs> <laughs> but, Moving on. A whole bunch of Hammer references this week. It was funny um, online. It was just goofy shit. Anyway, so yes. Uh, moving on. Terror, yes, moving. Terrifier three. Oh, Terrifier 3, Scary Part 3, 3, 3, 3. You survived the most famous serial killer since Jack the Ripper. The five-year anniversary is coming up. I think a lot of people would really like to hear from you after all this time. Want to know what it's like to be in the presence of that kind of evil. What goes through your brain when he's close enough to you. You feel his breath... Who? How can you be sure it was really him? I can feel it. Who is this Santa? He's scaring my kid. Yeah, he's scaring me too. Hey, Santa's handing out presents! Julian! Why would he come back here? Even if he was alive, which he isn't. When you want to get as far away from here as possible, as far away from you, we both know this isn't over. I have to go back to the Terrifier. It's still buried there, isn't it? It might be the only thing that could stop them. Written, directed by Damien Leone. Now, dude, this was the number one film last weekend in the country. It was like a little over $18 million beat out Joker 2, right? So, like, the the, the budget is like half a million dollars or like, you know, $500,000, and it's making, you know, much, much, much bank. Starring Lauren Lavera, obviously, David Howard Thornton as art, 
Antonella Rose. And there's also some really, really cool, and I don't want to spoil it, but I'm going to spoil it, uh, cameos by Clint Howard, Daniel Roebuck, Chris Jericho, Tom Savini, and Jason Patrick. So I, I don't know what you really say about the plot. Um, you know, it's Arthur Clown is back. It's Christmas time. And he's um, unleashing chaos on the unsuspecting residents of Miles County as they peacefully drift off to try to get into their Christmas Eve and their Christmas holiday. So it, it basically picks up kind of, I think, a few years after Terrifier 2. And then there's like flashbacks to the ending of Terrifier 2, uh, cleverly enough. <laughs> um, and uh, so you, 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 you pick up the threads from part two and it kind of expands again on the mythology right so art is back with again i don't want to spoil too much like it's hard to like kind of talk about these films because you don't want to give too much away but you also want to like talk intelligently about it i guess i would just say logically it's an extension of part two and it expands upon the mythology of this whole hell versus good kind of thing and the supernatural aspect of art the clown and how he is here and why he's here and what the whole plot is regarding, you know, the young girl and her brother and everyone that survived from part two. So again, if you're a terrifier fan, you'll dig it. If you don't like these movies, this isn't going to change your mind. (laughs) You know what you're getting into. It's unbridled over the top insane gore and gore and gore and gore and gore and gore. Now, the good thing was this only ran about, I think, two hours, whereas part two, I think it was about two hours and 40 minutes or so, which I think I even noted at the time when I did the review, for me, it was about 40 minutes too long. You know, it, it got to the point where I was like, oh, the movie's over, and then it went for like another 40, 45 minutes, and I thought it was a little too long. I would say overall, again, I'm a big fan of obviously practical effects and watching how things are done, how things are made and the special effects in the movies. And um, obviously Thornton is an amazing pantomime and he's an amazing actor as art. And a lot of the other actors are good. You know, I I think everybody does a good job and they're pretty convincing in, in what they have to work with. That being said, again, if you, if you dig these movies, this is fine. If you're not a big fan, you're not going to want to watch this and, you know, don't check it out because like I said, it's not like, you know, I feel like your husband's like, oh, no, no, this is the one you're going to really love this. You're like, no, 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 you're you're not going to love this. Uh, Or you're dating a chick and she's like, no, this is my favorite movie. It's like, okay, I I, I have to call the police. I have to run. (laughs) Oh, my my lift is here. Um, So I I would say I was, uh, I, I had fun. I was less entertained than I was by part two which sounds weird. And I don't know whether, and and I know it sounds very, very simple and very, very dumb, but I kind of like the Christmas setting. I was a little off because I'm like, sort of like I'm in the mood for Halloween. Now the first couple, and of course, obviously when the art, the clown, the character showed up in all Hallows Eve, they've all been set at Halloween. So I get them trying to like set it at a different time of the year and trying to do something a little bit different. By the same token, I was like, I almost wish this came out right before Christmas. Yeah. I was thinking because the same, then, at least you know in what November, mean? you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. 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 Cause then it would be like, kind of like, or like, yeah, like black Friday. Right. So, cause everybody's off your shop and you have some, like, you know, have something to do. And I'd be like, Oh cool. Like you're kind of bridging between Halloween and Christmas. And I, I, I you know, I think there were a lot of really, again, great kills, great practical effects, and so much gore. Again, if that's your thing, appreciate this for what it is, and that's what you're going into it for. If you're looking for sort of like, you know, a lot of character development or like plot, you know, (laughs) storyline, you know, this ain't it. And I end by that. And that, again, I'm going to go off on a limb, and I don't know if anybody else agrees. I like the character of art. Again, from All Hallows, All Hallows, Eve 2, and the original Terrifier, where it was more just this sort of like effed up, kind of, you know, weird. There's kind of a supernatural aspect to them, but you're not kind of like defined by any definite mythology or definite story and background or purpose or explanation, which scares me more, right? You know, like John Carpenter's Halloween. 
you've got Michael as the shape and you're not sure, is he just a human being? Is he supernatural? What's going on? And as more and more sequels go on, you get more mythology, you get more background, you get more explanation. So I actually prefer art more just this undefined. You're not sure what he is. You're not sure what's going on. Maybe he's supernatural. Maybe he's just like this effed up dude in a clown outfit without sort of the overt evil dead hellraiser kind of, you know, mythology, but everything, you know, again, every story has to build in every sequel. So you've got to give more and more and more and more. And if this is the, you know, what the, you know, Leon wanted to do with his story, you know, more power to you. I respect that. I just like more of a practical kill kind of weirdo, you know, you go to the supermarket, somebody follows you home and something weird happens. Not necessarily, you know, the bride of the devil pops out of your toilet. Right. You know, so, um, yeah. so look, I, I had, I, I had to find time. I took off an afternoon of work cause you know, this is monkey business. So this was very important for me to check out. Um, again, if you're a fan, I think you'll dig it. Maybe not as much as part two, but it is what it is. So I don't know. Did you have you seen all of them? Uh, or? I, you know what? I think I have to go. I think I've watched all Hallows Eve, but I do not recall okay. at all. I I'm pretty sure I've seen it, but I have to go back and rewatch it because I don't remember much from it. Um, okay. And I've seen you know Terrifier one, two, and now three. Um, you know, a couple of the things that I was thinking about uh, from this movie is like one, like David Howard Thornton was was awesome, and I, I, I the whole time I'm watching him, I'm thinking he obviously must have done like mime classes or whatever right, because right. his nonverbal communication skill, like right, the way right. he like just emotes and everything, was just absolutely outstanding. And sure. some of the shit that he was like was just laughing out freaking loud. Well, well, and, and let know, me and let me yeah. just interrupt. Remember yeah. the last time. We were here. I reviewed the movie Stream, and he's one of the four killers in Stream, and he also does the same pantomime kind of routine in that film. So, and, and he was also in last year. Was it the um, the Grinch horror movie that they did? Um, so again, it was the same kind of kind of act. But again, I I totally agree with you. Yeah, and uh, like especially there was a couple of without this is really giving anything away when when that uh, that that podcast girl and her boyfriend were in there and she's explaining how she how like how she idolizes art or whatever is like the most amazing right. and he's like around the corner oh, and, you see his, yeah. and you see him oh. like you know waving like at his face yeah. like you know he's like <laughs> blushing and shit like his tears <laughs> coming down it was just i was just there was so many scenes like that that i was just laughing out loud right. like um the uh the blood angel you know, you know that, what I'm talking about. Because as soon as he <laughs> as soon as he laid down, I said, "If they don't do a friggin' angel here, I'm going to be so oh." And I also I almost started clapping. I was like, "Awesome!" <laughs> I was like, "Yeah." I, th there was only a, a handful of people in the theater, and I must have looked like a complete lunatic because I am fucking laughing out loud through all the kill, like through almost every kill. I'm like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> like all oh, that's kill. I'm we like, oh, that is so sweet. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm re I am like so getting into all of it because everything was so everything got know, ramped up. And, that's like, funny. Like, uh, so I know no, that's funny because I went last Monday afternoon. It was like a like a noon show, and the theater was half packed. Oh, it was oh, also really? Columbus Day, so like, yeah, I think a lot of people had off from work. Yeah. But I was like, but to your point, there were actually people. I was like, all right, so I'm not a freak for laughing at this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the posterior yeah. chainsaw. I was like, oh, and everyone's like, oh. <laughs> that, that, That's the one where I was that, like, that, oh no. That might have that might have been the sickest kill of the entire movie it was just yeah i was like absolutely insane i was like yeah i oh came home and i had a, i came home and i took a dump and i was like oh no <laughs> you're looking at you're looking in the water underneath no, like, but oh, I was like, anything under there i was like that was painful enough like oh, oh no my. yeah, yeah oh. you know we we just we had seen that in a violent nature not too long ago when we were talking right. about how insane the kills were and how amazing like what some of the best kills i've seen in a long time and right. this is just like ticking it up another notch from that which well but see but also this leans more i would say exploitation like it's yeah. supposed to be this bad right you know what i mean it's supposed to be 
ridiculous and over the top and trying to show you like just how awful without a rating they can possibly be <laughs> i would say in a violent nature lean more still into within the realm of practicability of a guy that well again there's some supernatural elements in that movie but more along the lines of like what might possibly happen in real life um and you know the other thing with this too was you could tell it was going to end on a cliffhanger from a mile away um to set up a part four um, oh yeah, and they, also, they gotta keep the yeah. franchise rolling. They're not gonna stop well, what's funny, this cash well, cow. Well what's funny about that was I saw one report that said um writer and director Leone said that uh the next one's gonna be the last one, which you know it's like I, you know, okay, you know, if that's the story you want to tell. And again, you also have to respect because apparently after part two and the success of part two last year, he was approached by a multitude of major studios who wanted to fund the part three, but he said he would never be able to get away with what he wanted to do. There would be so much studio interference. And he said, nah, I'm just going to stick with my platform. I'm going to stick with my people and we're going to do what we've been doing. So you've got to respect that. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So, yeah. So like I said, if part four is the end of it, good. Like I said, I'm not as much of a big fan of the supernatural aspect um, the part, like I said, part two had more of it than here, but here obviously gave more of the backstory of the, the supernatural element. And then the, again, spoilers, the finale sort of has all the supernatural stuff, but, but yeah, but, but just some of the, like the twistedness, insanity, bloodletting, gore, uh, it, it, it was fantastic. Again, get drunk, have a Halloween party. <laughs> if you're all freaking freaks, watch it. Yeah, I mean it is. It is an instant holiday classic. It's a instant Christmas classic. To add yeah, I'm going to make my family watch it on Christmas Eve after <laughs> church. So, <laughs> uh, oh, all right. Um, so, hey, did you do you do you have a book? Do you had a you read a book, didn't you? I mean, oh my god, I know I, well, you, you know I saw books, pe- but you read I know. A- I- I was going to say, I saw you posted a picture of your patches that you're selling, and there was a book. you got to be fucking kidding. People were alarmed there was a book I, there was, in your there house. There was like a gasp that was like a, a collective <gasps> gasp on the internet. <gasps> you have a book! <laughs> and it wasn't even like the Sears Girdle catalog. I'm like, well, it is a picture book. <laughs> it's, a coffee table, <laughs> it's a coffee table picture book of all this vintage Halloween. By the way, <laughs> I got to do a review on that book, because that, that, that uh, vintage Halloween book is outstanding but well nice anyway but you have a book to talk about we won't get into that yeah now this is a really really niche book and i don't know how many people this is going to appeal to you'd have to be a real hardcore either horror fan or fan of film itself or just vampires but it's called vampires in the silent screen cinema's first age of vampires 1897 to 1922 written by david jones it's 327 pages. It also costs, again, over $100. So it's always my uh, warning, my my heads up on people. My wife works at a college library. I can ILL stuff, interlibrary loan stuff for free. So if you can find this through your local library, whether it be public library, college library, university library, it, again, if you're interested, I you know, I wouldn't spend a hundred dollars, but anyway, it's the first study of vampires in silent cinema. And it presents a detailed academic discussion of the films and their sources. So again, it's through this whole sociocultural framework and critical highlighting of echo horror theory and it's used throughout the book. So what, what I thought was cool was again, there's a bunch of movies I've never heard of, um, including you know, the author identifies the fire elemental from the Wharton brothers, the mysteries of Myra from 1916 as the cinema's original vampire. And he also talks about a movie called Dracula's death from 1920, as well as the first ever film female vampire in Eric Kober's Lilith and lie from 1919. Uh, another highlight was uh, another movie I never heard of was, um, Alexander Corda's Magic from 1917, featuring a vampire that kind of may or may not be Dracula, um, named Count Merlin. So, again, if that interests you, I would definitely try to check it out from your library. I dug it, it turning me on to like stuff I've never heard of, and it's always 
you know, you always think about like, oh, I've seen everything. I've seen everything. And then you're like, oh my God, I've never heard of this. I've never heard of this. I never heard of this. And if you can even like track down a little bit of it, either on YouTube or on the internet or wherever, it's always cool to kind of see the predicate and the first attempts at all these movies, how they were the stepping stones for future projects, whether that's, you know, the German expressionist films or the universal films, obviously, and then moving on to hammer and so forth. So that's it. Hmm. Now, yeah, these, it was cool. Are, are it was cool. Movi- are these movies available? Like, do you, are they like on YouTube or the ways that you could, I haven't gotten that them? far. I haven't gotten that far yet. I literally just checked. Okay. the book out and I just finished it so what I was going to do was I was going to try to find them so if I find them anywhere I'd be happy to post some of the links in our group and our group is what on Facebook Chris? It's the Hauntcast group You're a smart motherfucker, that's right Oh, yeah, cleverly go, enough Go figure, right? Wow, yeah, that's so a pretty if, cool name How'd you come up with that? If you're not a member, <laughs> I didn't um, P- Smash that button, P- like, subscribe PJ Reverend did <laughs> Um, <laughs> right, 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 right. I just ran with it. Um, yeah, but if join the Hauntcast group if you want to uh, be up to date on everything that's going on with uh, with the show. On Instagram, it's hauntcast.podcast. Um, if you want to follow along, I post every week I updates on what's happening with the show. As they drop, you know, I let you, I fill you in. So if you do want to know what's coming out each week, Um, what segments we're dropping, just uh, follow along. Join the group or uh, follow us on Instagram. Right? Or don't. Or don't. You know, whatever. You know. (laughs) I'm I'm not the boss of you. I'm not, you know, so. You're not? (laughs) Well, you are. For you, Johnny Thunder, I am. Not the rest of these people. How Uh, dare you? I know. So uh, before we uh, we break, give us a... Give us a, a wrap on what's going on over at the Bates. Are you having some fun? Getting wow. some good scares? What's yeah. happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a fun season. Yeah? You know, we started, God, it was like the second, it was like the third weekend in September. Um, so it's been, it's, it's been fun. Like I said, I'm only doing kind of Friday, Saturday, uh, mostly Saturdays. But I've gotten to do a couple cool things, which I always like dig. I've gotten to do two morning uh, Philadelphia morning news shows. I've done Fox 29, and I just did uh, PHL 17, which is awesome. Now, the 5 a.m. call times aren't awesome. But, <laughs> but, you know, trying to get everybody in makeup, get everybody in costume, and get everything done for like a you know, 745, 8. And it's typically like you have hits usually like 745, 845, 945. Um, so yeah, it's been fun, you know, and again, seeing like old friends, um, always catching up with people, you know, some you keep in touch with more than others over the, you know, over the, over the non haunt season, but it's been fun. Yeah. It's, uh, Bubba's back. I'm out there doing my thing. Um, you know, having fun, taking pictures, entertaining. Cause I'm obviously very entertaining. And uh, it's it, it's been it's been a fun season, so I'm 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 thankful to be back, and I'm glad to uh, have the opportunity. Like again, like I said, it's it was always my you know fantasy as a kid to work in a friggin' haunted house. You know, growing up, like I said, I I, I went to uh, um, you know Dracula's Castle and in, in Wildwood Brigantine Castle. So those were always, like the big things going down the shore, or you know, going down Delaware and going to the haunted mansion and all the dark rides and stuff like that. So I was always like, wow, that'd be so awesome someday to do something like that. And, you know, I got to live that out. So I, I'm pretty thankful. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. You have a- any one good little, uh, and like one really great scare or funny story from the <laughs> oh few line. God. Actually, you know, it just, ha- you know, it's so funny. You just said that yeah. it actually happened last night. So, <laughs> There's a family. Do tell. Oh my god, dude! They're not, see. I don't. I don't know if I can actually. Well, I'm gonna say, yeah. but I don't know. So last night, there's. So last night, there was this fa- this family. I was right outside the line to get into the uh, the queue line for the for the for the base motel for the haunted house itself. So I'm standing there and like you know there's like it's like a family of like you know maybe like 10 15 people or whatever. So most of them come up and they're fine whatever whatever and this woman's just like, "Oh no, oh hell no. Oh no, oh no." Cuz I had just come out of I'm in the courtyard and I just went over to the hayride line, just went over to the corn trail line and then I just came over to the house and I was just kind of standing there and she's like, "Oh hell no, hell no." They're like, "Oh, come on, come on, come on." 
And then, like, you know, they all went in and basically left her behind and they're laughing at her. So it was basically like every time she, like, tried to, like, come through past me, I'd kind of, like, take a step forward and she would scream and run back into the courtyard. So she comes back, she comes back up. They're like, come on, come on, stop being a fool. Get over here, get over here. So finally, like, I kind of just, like, let her go through, right? So as soon as she goes through, like, I just turned and I was like, you know, I just was like, hey, you know, whatever. (laughs) She friggin' rolls. Falls on the ground. She loses her baseball hat, right? So three of her kids come over to try to help her to pick her up. So everyone's like laughing and like, you know, having fun or whatever. One of the kids apparently steps on her hair and she tries to stand up. And as she does, she's like, get off my hair, get off my wig, get off my wig, get off my wig. <laughs> so <laughs> she, the hair sucked to the, the hair sucked to the hat. She's trying to hold on to like the wig, like so like the wig sideways with like the the hat and the family's like laughing at her, taking pictures, and they're like, Oh, you're always a fool. Uh, and it was it was just I was just dying because I was like, Oh, it's a wig. But <laughs> <laughs> that one made me laugh. Like literally it was just last night. A so. hair hat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's dude, I was just like, it was like, you know, rock on Wayne, you know. I was, it was the, it was it was hilarious. <laughs> Awesome. Oh, and also, I was going to say, I was going to give a shout out to our good, good, good buddy, Ed Gannon. I've been using his death whistle that I bought. You know, I've never used sort of like a prop like that. I always have like my axe out there. So I've been using the Aztec death whistle that I bought from him at the Eastern Hunt Con up here in Oaks in the spring. And it's great because, you know, again, if I want to take a break with my vocals, uh, you can just run up behind crowds. You just kind of blow the death whistle low. And it sounds like, a you know, a real friggin' scream. Um, and people, people love it. People hate it. What's also cool is people like, I hear people go, Oh my God, that's one of those death whistles. And I was like, Oh, okay, cool. So a lot of people like that too. I use it sparingly. Like I don't want it to be like a crutch, but it's been fun this season to try to do something different like that because we've got some other people online with me. Um, the one clown uses obviously like an air horn. Uh, another buddy uses, um, this like fake cattle prod, which like lights up and like sounds literally like a real cattle prod. So it's been a lot of fun. And I'm, uh, um, again, thankful and glad to be back. Sweet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sweet. So the Meyer looks like really, really kick ass, man. Thanks, my man. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. It's been, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of the work that I put in. I was like over the five months or so that I was building the new things for it. Uh, you know, I got started a lot earlier than I typically have over the last few years. So, which was kind of great because I got started so early doing the props and I kind of just kept things rolling into, you know, getting shit ready for the haunt and like, re- I, like okay, now I'm done with those things. I'm done. And of course, I'm not done. <laughs> of course, I'm like, I'm looking at this. Sure. I'm looking at the, like the, the, uh, the maggot thing. And I covered, with, I covered it uh, years ago with liquid latex, which was the worst idea ever because the la- latex over a couple of years starts to crack and break up and, you know... So so I ended up stripping the whole thing down, redid it, and then I, I did that with a couple of, couple other props like patch and work, redoing things, and um, so and then I started setting up the yard about a week earlier than I typically do. I'm gonna have a collective go fuck yourself, Baker, because I'm telling them, telling everybody I am on track for the track A haunt this year. You know, how, uh, Revenants talked about the track A, the track sure. B, the track C. I'm actually dead on for a track a like i've got everything done everything's out um i've remade and everything next, and then, everything up wait 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 wait, wait. and then next week one of the nor'easters comes up like it always does the week of friggin halloween right that's the I mean, only thing that can derail me right now because is right now our nature. weather looks okay because originally then for trick-or-treat night how you know the 31st we were supposed to get some rain and i'm like i keep watching because every friggin year every year Year, every we year. get at least like a bad storm with bad winds, and then there's like just a nor'easter. Like I said, I'm down here <laughs> outside of Philly. Like I'm like right, you know, like right near Delaware, and you know, I'm on the Delaware border by Pennsylvania. You're right up there in Cape Cod, yeah. so we get the same nor'easter kind of patterns. Usually, yeah, we get yeah. we get hit with the storm rolls through. It comes right through like. Pennsylvania awesome through New York and it, it yeah. hits me. Yeah. So yeah. usually I get hit by the same storms. But um, but anyway, yeah, outside a 
of the act of you know God or nature or whatever. Uh, everything's good to go. All I have left is just to uh, set up the the last minute stuff that I do in the driveway. Which this year I'm not doing any type of walkthrough whatsoever. I did a okay. little one last year. It's just going to be the facade, the uh, the laser vortex, me hanging out. I got a couple of pneumatics. I've got like the coffin that that's. The lid slams up and down. These okay. are all on push buttons. They're all like remotes. And I've got a, I've got the upshot fogger that the remote was not working last yeah, year. Yeah, I was going to say, the, watch what you say after upshot. And the frog, <laughs> and the froggies, people were awesome because I, I had to, sh- I couldn't use it last year because I waited. I bought it in April. They shipped uh-huh. it immediately, and I didn't test it out until the week before Halloween and realized the fucking remote didn't work. So I was like. <laughs> I, I kept telling myself, well, okay, I'm going to test that next week. I'm going to test that next sure. week. And then, and then it's the week before I Halloween. Admire your, I admire your confidence. So I sent it down to them. They fixed it, sent it back to me. I tested it. Works, oh, nice. Works great. So I've got an upshot fogger um, to get a little startle, like, you know, uh, with like, get like a red leds on it so it kind of look like a flame coming out and i've got yeah. uh the air cannon which never fails so i've got a few push buttons in my little uh my little uh puppet master minion sound system thing that uh super loud with a bunch of great creature growls and you know in attack sound effects and shit so i mean i, I got that that's all like everything's right, right ready to go all i have to do is just like put up the set up the little facade out of the pvc and tarps and throw out a couple of the pneumatics Plug everything in, hang out. You know, I'm going to get a little scare, give out the candy. Uh, nice. I'm going to sit in my throne all night, and it's going to be great. Oh, my I'm God. Just gonna chill out and just, you know. Will you be able to get from the bathroom then outside if you need to? Oh, yeah. Or? That might be a little difficult. Uh, so, um, you know, maybe, womp, I should womp, sit, maybe I should sit in the driveway then, I guess. Yeah. I, I, I might just try <laughs> to be outside a little bit. Yeah, I know. We stocked up on uh, full-size candy bars early because last year... I waited until like the end of September, or it was like the first week in November, or first week in November, first week in October, and like all the full size candy bars were gone, and I was like, oh my god! So we've stocked up on the full size candy bars, and uh, I just do my little. I'm just doing a little. I have my hunchback character I'm doing this year, which is with a bunch of lighting and just doing some like goofy tombstones, and like that's enough, you know. And like I said, my wife will be out there. My daughter's going trick or treating with all of her friends again, so I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, I'm hoping the rain holds off. I think was it last year, year before we had rain, which was kind of a bummer. So, yeah. well, you know, the good thing about being a haunt actor is you've already had like ten Halloweens already. Oh my god! So. And see, and that's <laughs> and see, that's the other thing. Like, I that's why it's so awesome because. You know, we were up for a, well, we had a welcome back uh, barbecue in August, you know, and it was like, oh, cool. Like, you know, I'm on the farm again. The farm's only 15 minutes from my house. But um, but then you go up for the, uh, the, the meeting over Labor Day weekend. And then, like you had said, I started the third, probably the third weekend in September. So it's been awesome just, again, getting some awesome makeup dressing up having fun getting to see all the props and all the sets and everything so yeah it's uh it's been fun it's been cool yeah excellent yeah all right well i think that's a wrap yeah i think so i think we'll polish off these drinks you'll polish off whatever you're having from the dispensary and uh you know what genius happy halloween hey man happy halloween all right everybody as always thank you for listening this is johnny thunder with Baker saying stay scary and happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Please follow the podcast. Give us a five star review. Stalk us on social media. Links in the description. And visit our blog page for more show info at huntcastpodcast.net forward slash blog. Until next time, stay scary. <laughs> I got to warn you, you're doomed to stay. Go. Go.